Hello and welcome back to The Note. One of the big problems for investors these days is that absolutely everything appears to be expensive. Couple that with uh, real reasons for concern about the business climate and it gets very difficult indeed to manage money. With me now to explain how he is trying to deal with this uh, difficult situation is the Chief Strategist for Picte Asset Management here in London, Luca Paolini. Thanks very much for joining me. Let's start by taking a look at a rather startling chart uh, you took from the IMF, um, showing that taxes have been rising really very significantly across the world for everybody except companies. As I understand it, you're suggesting that this might not be politically sustainable. Yeah, I think that what this chart shows very simply is that uh, much of the, the burden that has been actually um, went to, uh, to the, the, the household sector, but actually the corporations have been actually paying more tax, actually less, at a time where obviously the government were looking for more revenue. So I think this is not sustainable in, in, in the long term. Okay, and if we now take a look at wages uh, as a share of the US economy, <laughs> again, this looks as though capital is beating labor to an extent that can't carry on for long. Yeah, the message from this chart is very simply that uh, uh, the GDP or the wealth that has been created actually is going all to, to profits. And again, that's, that's part of this income inequality story. And I think this is not sustainable again. Okay. Now, we have reasons, therefore, for, for concern about the, uh, the medium and long-term outlook. But we also have a lot of expensive assets to think about. Let's co focus on credit. You produced this chart on, uh, the, uh, on the quality of uh, credit being issued today compared to 05 as the, uh, as the bubble was building up. We have vastly lower quality these days. Why is that? First of all, let me say that even if you look at government bonds, the story will be pretty much similar because mm. you've seen obviously the downgrade of the US France, the Netherlands. There's virtually so, no AAA left, in other yes, words. Yes, and I think, you know, that's why when we look at bond yields that are close to an all-time low, actually they're on an all-time low in the corporate space, we also have to look at the quality, and the quality has been falling for, for a number of reasons. One is because investors were actually looking for to buy, if you want, um, uh, high-risk uh, and high-yield uh, companies, but also because the banks have reduced their lending to, to, to the riskiest, actually, borrowers. So this is an outcrop of the disintermediation of the banks. They're going to the markets rather than to yes. lenders. So where exactly do we find any value within the credit space? High yield seems to have got to the point where it's no longer of, of any great use. Let's take a look at uh, emerging markets. This is, a, again, another chart that you pr produced pointing towards EM local currency debt. Ex explain what's going on in this chart. Yeah, let me say, first of all, that we think we are in a phase of rising bond yields. Hmm. In a rising bond yields, I think investors should look for, for low durations um, hmm. uh, bonds. Uh, and also we think that, especially in emerging markets, we have the, the perfect combination in a way. We have low duration in most of the, of, the, of, the, of the major indices, but also we have good valuation. So on an emerging market local currency, debt, the average yield is now close to 7%, which right. is almost five percentage point above the developed market's average yield. So it is a big uh, yield advantage. It's a big yield advantage, but presumably there's also a big difference in risk. If we, where exactly is the value? In, uh, in emerging markets, given that there are obviously reasons for concern about some of them. There are always risks in investing in emerging markets, I have to say, but we shouldn't forget that here we are talking about government debt. Mm. And the major risk in government debt is obviously the risk of default. Mm. And the risk of default depends critically on the level of, of debt to GDP. And in emerging markets, close to an all-time low, and in developed markets, close to an all-time high. So I think there are always risks, but the fundamentals are still in favor of emerging markets. Okay, final question, which particular uh, lo local government, local debt markets interest you the most in, in emerging markets? I think that is we have to distinguish between the, the, the short term and the long term. Mm. I think in the short term, we still <coughs> think that some markets like, like Brazil, Mexico, potentially even Russia can be interesting. Uh, but I have to say that if you extend the analysis over the long term, I think we should go for markets where I think the gross prospects are actually the best and one of these can potentially be, be China. Okay, Luca, thank you very much indeed. I think the ultimate message from this is the long time verity. It's not an easy time to be investing. There are returns to be had. But if you want to give yourself a chance of a decent return, you're going to have to take a higher risk.